Hi and welcome to Le Studio Marco Primo. Today we're going to talk about the signal flow within Magic Samplitude Pro X4 and Pro X5. A lot of beginners ask about uh, where the signal go in the software with the interface and uh, they might get uh, mixed up with all those options. So let's dive in right away. Okay, let's start with uh, the basics. Uh, set up your audio interface. You just hit Y on your keyboard. And it uh, shows the settings. Uh, the first page that you need to check is the audio setup to choose the right drivers. Of course, ASIO drivers are better uh, for latency and compatibility. So check with the maker of your audio interface for uh, the latest drivers. Once your uh, drivers are uh, set up, you can uh, set a buffer, uh, go into the control panel and this will show the settings of your audio interface and you can set uh, the buffer. For me, I always start at 256 and I try to go lower or go higher if it's not uh, working properly. So, and the second page is a list of all the inputs and all the playback outputs. Usually the naming of the inputs and outputs will look like that. Um, and of course you can click on rename and give them a name. So that's what I did. And since I, I don't have a patch bay and I leave uh, all my preamps connected to the same inputs of the interface, I did name all the inputs uh, with the name of the preamp itself. So remember those are stereo inputs. That's why I did name it uh, ISA 1 and 2. So the preamp 1 and preamp 2. If I go on a track and check the inputs, you'll see that 1 and 2 split in two uh, inputs, left and right. So the left is ISA 1, the right is ISA 2. And uh, it goes on like that up to the end. So once we chose the input, you uh, go on a track and activate the recording. And then you can see uh, the levels go up and down. Uh, if you don't see the levels, that might be because the monitoring is uh, unactive. And of course, I did choose uh, no audio monitoring peak meters only. Um, the reason is uh, I'm doing all my monitoring uh, mix uh, from uh, the mixer of the audio interface. In that instance, uh, it is uh, Total Mix FX for my uh, RMA Fireface UFX. And you see the levels here as well. And the big reason I like to do uh, my mix with the audio interface itself is because uh, there's zero latency. The latency is uh, the delay that the computer needs to process the audio and uh, initiate the playback. So sometimes you could play on the piano and the notes will be heard a bit later if uh, there's too much latency. So that's one thing to uh, be aware of. And the other reason is with Tunnel Mix effects, you get uh, an EQ and uh, some dynamics for each inputs. Uh, and of course I can redirect any inputs, any playback uh, outputs from the software to any outputs for the headphones. So it gives me a bit more flexibility. And uh, of course, the visually, I'm very used to this setup. So, and I can save uh, my mixes for different customers. So that's a good thing. Let's push R to record. This is a test of recording uh, with Samplitude Pro X5. And let's push the space this bar. This is a test of recording uh, with Samplitude Pro X5. Okay, so what is happening right now, if we um, open the mixer, 
is that you have a signal on one track and the tra the signal goes to the master levels which is directed to the software output that I name monitors and the software output is right here monitors so I can hear uh, the signal uh, right now I'm recording uh, this output with the loopback function and uh, I use the, the phone output to uh, record it so I can change the level of what I hear and it won't affect what is recorded. Okay, let me go back again and explain. Every tracks have its own input, so you can choose what input. And every track has its own output, <coughs> so you can redirect the output wherever you want. So the actual setup is uh, we have two uh, tracks, two, one submix and two aux buses. Uh, so we see them here, the two tracks, one uh, aux, the second aux, and the submix. So the reason why I did this setup is to put all the all the tracks and the first uh, aux uh, redirected to this main bus. So that's the output main. Of course, originally they were to stereo, so uh, the, the signal will go directly to the master output. Uh, but now I chose the main bus. So if I play back, this is a test of recording with Samplitude Pro X5. Okay, let's explain what happened, why all the levels went up. So this track is redirected to the main, and the main is uh, directed to the master output. Okay, so let's play again. This is a test of recording. Okay, that's why there's some signal to the, the master output. And the main itself is sent to the phone aux, which is here. You have the choice to aux1, aux2 will, uh, is name phone, I did rename it. And this is why uh, everything that goes to the main will also go, because of this setting, to the phone outputs. And I did choose the, the software output phones. And of course, this is the output right here. So if we play again, this is a test of recording with Samplitude Pro. Okay, you see that there's some level to the software playback phones. And also there's some levels to the main, which is the software output, uh, which is named monitors monitors that we can see in total mix effects right here monitors so if i go to my main output the physical main output you see that my level is up uh, on the monitors so if i play back i will hear the levels if i put the volume down since we have another output named phones which i'm recording right now changing the volume on the on the main won't change the volume that is recorded. And of course the, the volume that is recorded is in OBS. If I push play again, this is a test of recording with Samplitude Pro X5. Okay, let's check it again. The inputs are the inputs uh, of your preamps or line in on your uh, audio interface. And then every uh, outputs of tracks could be set to different places. Okay. And here I have an auxiliary uh, bus that is not doing anything right now. Uh, let's put a reverb on it. Uh, reverb. Okay. And if I push play. 
This is a test of recording. There's nothing again. Uh, so if we want to redirect uh, our track to be affected by the reverb, we go into the aux here. So those are aux send. Um, and aux one, we just add a bit of reverb. Let's push play again. This is a test of recording. Okay. Uh, and the aux could be uh, directed differently. You have three choices. Aux output direct, aux output pre, and aux output post. The post is after EQ, after uh, the fader and everything. Uh, the pre is before the fader, and direct is bypassing everything on your uh, channel and send it directly to uh, the aux track. Uh, if it's pre-fader and we push play, this is a test of recording with Sandy Pro X5. Okay. You see that if I lower the volume of the track, um, the reverb will still receive uh, the signal. I'm going to re rename the aux track reverb. So, what it does is my track receives the input ear and there's one aux send that send a part of the signal so I can change the level to an auxiliary uh, channel with a reverb on it. Both tracks output to the main bus, which is here, and the main bus is going to the master uh, channel. And while doing so, the main bus is sent to an auxiliary with this aux send to another aux uh, channel, which is named phones, to be controlled separately from the master output. I could set more aux send and uh, choose uh, all bunch of outputs. If I want to, let's say we want to do uh, reamp uh, this track, so I could choose another output, which I named uh, reamp. And in Total Mix Effects, this is the software uh, output here. And the uh, reamping, I could decide to uh, send it to a physical output. So this physical output could be uh, sent to a compressor or an outboard gear of some sort and be recorded again uh, if you take the outboard gear to another input. So let's push play. Okay, you see there was level because the software output here is uh, redirected to the reamp. So I'm gonna close everything and go back to our output, which used the loopback to be recorded to the OBS. I hope I did not lose you <laughs> yet. Um, so the difference with a sub-mix bus and an auxiliary bus is that the aux bus will receive a different signal from the tracks but they could be at different levels, okay? So there's a tiny bit of this track going to uh, the re reverb aux bus and more of this track. The sub-mix bus, on the contrary, uh, it's the output of the track that will go uh, into the sub-mix bus and you choose the volumes with the faders here, okay? So let's play again and you'll see the difference in volume in the submix bus named main. This is a test of recording with Samplitude Pro X5. So you see the volume did change here uh, in the submix bus, but if I activate the, uh, the aux, then because we are in pre-fader, 
the volume won't go down if I uh, put down the volume. Again, this is a test of recording with Sentinel Pro X5. Okay, let's put it back to post and do it again. This is a test of Samplitude Pro X5. Okay. Another aspect to consider is the gain knob that you find in the mixer right here. So uh, why would they put a gain and a fader on the same channel? The reason is the fader is more precise in the upper levels. Uh, you see that distance here from 0 to 10. And then the 10 to 20 is a bit smaller and 20 to 40 uh, is even smaller uh, gap if you want to go to uh, minus 30 dB. So the thing that you can do is um, instead of having all your faders down like that uh, when mixing, you can put the gain down and then uh, having a more upper levels and of course more control uh, you would say what difference does it make well it will do a big difference if you have an external controller with faders because if you go with your fingers and uh, mixing the volumes it will be more precise with the faders close to zero db or in uh, upper range so that's one thing after that, there's another uh, way to change the volume. So we saw the gain here, um, the fader, and there's one at the object level. You see that bar is the level of the object itself. So you can change it, okay? Uh, if you go into uh, the object editor, you will have a volume right here, which is the equivalent of the bar, okay? You see it'll move. And there's also a gain for the object. So why having a gain in the mixer and the, a different one in the object editor? Actually, you can put plugins uh, on the object level. So if I put, uh, let's say, um, a deezer or a compressor, uh, the level going in the plugin will change with the gain. So you can have different effect or uh, some uh, plugin needs uh, different levels in the input to give great result. All right, maybe I repeated myself a few times in this video. Uh, it is not so simple that we uh, would think when we start to use a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. And that's why I, I took some different uh, ways to say the same thing. The most important thing is that you remember to always follow your signal flow uh, where it comes in, when it goes, and maybe it goes to multiple places and either they go uh, in different uh, output or they can all merge into the master uh, channel. So you need to be careful. You might uh, experience some weird behavior or you might uh, lower one volume and there's still a uh, signal going on because it goes into another path. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Of course, if you did like the video, click on like, consider subscribing, hit the bell to get notifications and share my videos. It's always a great help.